Okay? Are we live? Good morning, Rabotai. Chodesh Tov, Besiman Tov. Tuesday, first day of Chodesh Sivan, corresponding to the 4th of June 2019. The Lighthouse Torah Project, Le'ilu Nishmat Devorah Feige Bat Shemuel, Refua Shelema of Menachem Mendel Ben Sarabatia and Devorah Feige and Mechila and Ora Devorah Bat Rivka. The itorah.com live audio recording for Shiduchim of Nehamadina Bat Hanabatia, Eliyahu Haim Ben Esther, Sarah Simcha Bat Sophia, and Rachel Penina Bat Jenny. As we learn today inside, today was the day that Bene Israel arrived to Mount Sinai. And the Pasuk clearly states on the first day of the, third, of the third month that we left Egypt, Bene Israel arrived to Har Sinai. But interesting enough, the Pasuk says, Bayom Hazeh. Instead of saying the Pasuk, Bayom Ahu. What's the meaning in English? Bayom Ahu means that day. And Bayom Hazeh means today. And here is your question. Why doesn't the Torah say that the Jewish people arrived that day to Mount Sinai? Why the Pasuk says that the Jewish people arrived arrive to Mount Sinai on that day? So for that we need to reinforce it with a question of the Birkota Shahar and the Birkota Torah. When we say the Biracha, a person goes up to the Sefer, or we say Birkota Shahar in the morning, what do we say? Baruch atah Hashem noten ha-Torah. Why don't we say Baruch atah Hashem natan ha-Torah, the one that gave us the Torah, but actually we say noten ha-Torah, the one that actually is giving us the Torah. Our hachamim teach us that a person needs to put in their mind that every day that a Yehudi is able to wake up in the morning, the Torah is given back to him as well. And that's the reason why the Pasuk says, Bayom ahu. And interesting enough, today, 3,331 years ago, it was the day that we arrived to Mount Sinai. But obviously, due to jet lag, due to the tiredness, that's what's written in the Sepharim, that due to the journey of traveling in the desert, there was not much action today. We arrived and we rested. But something very beautiful that is found in this particular arrival to Mount Sinai that the Pasuk says, Bayomahu Mehila. The Pasuk writes afterwards, Bai Hansham Israel Neged Ahar. The nation camped, but the Torah uses a peculiar language to discuss how was our presence in Mount Sinai. The Pasuk, to be grammatically correct, should have said, Bayahanu Israel Neged Ahar. And the entire nation camped in front of the mountain. But what the Pasuk says, Va'ihan, and he camped. Rashi explains, Ke'ishehad belevehad. This was one of the few times in history that was a tremendous amount of unity and harmony among Am Israel. So since we are today into Rosh Chodesh, I like to combine the Shi'ur in two parts. We cannot overlook Sefirat Omer because we still are in the counting of the Omer. Today we counted the 45th day of the Omer. So we'll discuss for a few minutes the Sefirat Omer and then we we'll discuss at least some of the traditions which are observed during the celebration of uh, Shavuot. Now, today's Sefira, David Melech, which is the host of the week, welcomes Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu represents the Midah of Tiferet, the beautiful aspect of life. Yaakov Avinu also represents the Midah of Emet, which is the concept of Torah. So it says as follows, that the, fu the fundamental message of today's day is something that I spoke about it in the past, which discusses the importance of a Yehudi representing Hashem in the world through Kiddush Hashem and not Hasve Shalom through Hilul Hashem. 
It's a huge difference. Although it sounds very similar. Kiddush Hashem, Hilul Hashem. One is positive, one is negative. Kiddush Hashem means to sanctify Hashem's name. As the Pasuk writes in the Navi, Israel Asher Becha et Pa'ar. God takes pride on the behavior of the Jewish people. As I said last night to the ladies in the Midrashah program, it's not easy for a lady to come, leave the family, leave the children behind, and come to learn Torah for an hour. So guess what? It's a great zechut. Every time a Yehudi does something for a Kadosh Baruch Hu, Borei Olam does not leave unpaid invoices. Every step we take closer to Borei Olam, Borei Olam gets closer to us. And therefore it says, a Yehudi must walk with the head up high. You heard what happened in Germany a few days ago, that they're encouraging people not to walk around with kippot, right? That's, they believe that by acting this way, by acting this way, that anti-Semitism will be less. We need to know that God forbid, God forbid, I don't want to wish nothing negative, but history proves us that with the, try, the times that we try to blend in and to assimilate with the Goim, we pay a very, very, very heavy price. As a great rabbi said, if a Yehudi forgets to make Kiddush, the Goim will make Havdalah. What does this mean? Powerful statement. And it means Pashut. A Yehudi needs to make Havdalah. Baruch Elokenu Shebera'anu Lichbodo Bivdilano Minato'im Menatalano Torat Emet Behaye Olam Nata' Betochenu. We just said it in Tefillah Shaharit. Every day of our life, we say this verse that how proud we need to be of being the ambassadors of Akadosh Baruchu in the world. And this is the fundamental message of the Sefirah of today. I'm giving you the short version because I want to cover Shavuot at least to get my feet warm a bit on Shavuot. The messages between us and Hashem. The Gemara tells us there was a great rabbi, which you know, his name was Rabbi Akiva, the famous Rabbi Akiva that was spoke about him so much in the days of the Sefirat Omer, how he lost the students and how he did not allow that tragedy to bury him alive, and he became reinforced and resurrected by reestablishing and appointing the five holy students. So Rabbi Akiva used to say something that we all know, but it's today's message. Called, In English, it means that whatever Borei Olam does is for good. Perhaps we don't understand, perhaps we don't see the good yet, but eventually the good will come. And this was a statement that Rabbi Akiva lived by. Where does Rabbi Akiva get the courage and the strength and the discipline to look at everything with a good eyesight? Short answer, the teacher of Rabbi Akiva. Who was one of the teachers of Rabbi Akiva? Nahumish Gamzu. And the Gemara tells us, why was he called Gamzu? He says, Gamzu Letova. This is for good. Comes Rabbi Moshe Cordovero in Tomer de Vora, which is traditional learning for the month of Elul. And he says, why does, why does, Nahomish Gamzu says this word, Gamzu Letova. Why doesn't he say Gamze Letova? Why Zu? The word Zu in Hebrew, it is not a very common word. But you know what uh, the B. Moshe Cordovero explains? That in Hebrew, the word Ze equals to the number 13, 12 rather. The word zu represents to the number 13. And it says, this number 13 represents Yod Gimal Midot Arachamim. 
the 13 attributes of mercy from Hashem. That even though in the eyesight of the person, this may appear to be not good at all, this is part of Hashem's master plan, which is good. And this is today's message. Today's message, number one, of Ben Adam Lamakom is stop complaining to God. Stop complaining. Huh? Don't complain. Whatever God gives you is for the best. Complain means ta'anot. No ta'anot to God. Whatever Hashem gives us is good. And whatever Hashem gives us is for a good reason. And guess what? We already said this in the past. The more a person eats makir tov, the more a person complains less to Akadosh Baruch Hu, the more blessings comes into the person. Now we're going to move this sentence, Ben Adam Lahavero, husband and wife relationship. A husband asks himself, why did God give me such a wife? What do they do to deserve her? I'm sure you're talking about a good wife. You're asking God, wow, God, you gave me such an eshet hail. Beautiful. But let's be honest. Many men don't agree with what I just said. Many men say, why me? Has shalom. Or in a case, ladies, don't be offended. But usually that's the way it goes. The wife works in many areas much harder than a husband in the concept of marriage. And we'll talk about it some of the time. Baruch atta Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam shehakol nihiyah bidbaro. So you know what it says in the message of today? Appreciate your wife. Appreciate the friends that we have. That these are all God given into our life. It says, don't criticize and accept them for who they are. Many, t- many people don't have an easy time to live without criticism. But today's message is no criticism. Because when we criticize, okay, what are we saying? You're not good enough for me. Hasbe shalom. And in a marital relationship between husband and wife, as the book of Shalom Bayit writes, this could be a recipe for disaster. So what is the message of today? Appreciate your wife. So you may ask yourself, how do I show appreciation to my wife? There are many ways. First of all, expressing your gratitude to her. You invite her for a Rosh Chodesh meal. You bring flowers for Rosh Chodesh or for Shabbat. You do something special. You know, there are many ways. I think that many of you are married longer than I am, so can teach us what to do. But I already gave you a few tips. Ben Adam le Atzmo. It says, Ben Adam le Atzmo, bring a bit of honor to yourself. We all know that a person needs to run away from honor. The Mishnah writes in Pirkei Avot, Kol kavod, hakavod mimenu. The more we chase honor, the more honor runs away from us. But nevertheless, that doesn't mean that we don't have a bit of kavod for ourselves. And here he's talking about, specifically about Shabbat, Yom Tov and Rosh Chodesh. These are days which in the calendar are very special days. Obviously, on Shabbat and Yom Tov, people for sure eat and dress differently than the way we do during Rosh Chodesh. But guess what? In the day of Rosh Chodesh, there is also a mitzvah to have Seuda in honor of Rosh Chodesh. It's not obligation, but it's the proper thing to do. 
I know many couples that they go out every Rosh Chodesh. Besides when they go out every two weeks or once a week, whatever your schedule and your allowance and your work allows you, but they make the effort of going out on Rosh Chodesh. Why? To show that the day of Rosh Chodesh, it's a different day from the remaining 28 or 29 days of the month. Also, he's saying that when a Yehudi goes to the street, should be properly dressed and clean. What does it mean properly dressed? We're not talking about that you must wear a suit and a tie every day. Obviously not. Some of us do every day, some people don't. But that's not the message here. The message is when a Yehudi goes to the street, needs to go clean, needs to go presentable. Even when we walk on the street, I'm going to have to make this Shabbat, Beli Nether, a special announcement through the Minyanim of the synagogue. Why? I receive a complaint from certain concerned citizens that many members of our synagogue, when they walk out of the synagogue, instead of walking on the existing sidewalk, they walk in the middle of the street. And the cars that are turning from Yacht Club don't see that they are pedestrians walking on that side of the street. And there is a sidewalk. If there is no sidewalk, okay. But there is a sidewalk. Use the sidewalk. This is an opportunity to do Hilul Hashem or Kiddush Hashem. Even when I need to cross the street, I try to be careful of always crossing by the cross point. Why? Because I don't know who is watching me. And they're going to say, if you don't cross properly, why should I cross properly? So I got this complaint uh, on Sunday. Somebody called me up, very concerned. I said, thank you, concerned citizen. I'll speak to the people of the shul. It's like the police told me a few months ago that many people are driving and they don't come to a full stop at the exit of the property. And the people from Mystic Point are zooming, you know, coming in, flying, and God forbid, that causes a situation of danger. So we need to be careful, as it says before in the introduction to today's Sefirah. We are Hashem's ambassadors to the world. Whatever we do, it has the power to elevate Hashem's name, sanctify Hashem's name, or God forbid, the opposite. Even the way you behave in an airplane, which unfortunately sometimes Jewish people are in the news. God forbid. You need to remember, we are representatives of HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the planet Earth. Excellent point. Also, when you're coming into the property of the synagogue, and sometimes could be bumper and bumper traffic, do not block the exit of Mystic Point. Let the cars go through. You don't want them to curse you out. They don't want the, them to fight against the synagogue. We already have enough enemies throughout the world than to have enemies next door to us, God forbid. And I know that perhaps... You know, in Spanish we say, wash the dirty laundry inside of your home. But since many of the people affected by my statements listen and watching to this class, and whoever you may be, if you are in Brooklyn, if you are in Deal, if you are in Mexico, the same Torah is exactly the same. We represent Borea Olam. The better we are, the cleaner we are, the more proper and respectful we are, at least we're not giving a chance to a goy to complain. And guess what? Goim complain. And I tell you what I do, and I, I said this before. Whenever I have, I go to somebody's building, and the valet parks my car, I give him a tip. Why? Somebody tell me, why do you give a tip? Very simple. Because I don't want to be cursed by a goy. Sure. 
I don't want to, I, how many rabbis he may see a day? He says, I don't want to see someone that represents the community and the kahal to say, look at this guy. I brought his car. I kept it close. Ta -ta -ta, and he says, thank you and leaves. You are not different than what I am. We all the same. I may wear a different type of uniform, but we all the same. As the Pasuk says, Kulanu b'nei shehad nahnu. Also in the world of business ethics, in the way that we conduct ourselves in business, in the way we talk in the world of business. All that creates an influence for Kedushah, or God forbid, the opposite. Let's switch the topic to discuss the celebration of Shavuot. Without a doubt, the celebration of Shavuot is, without hesitation, the most fundamental holiday of the Jewish calendar. Perhaps may not be as famous as Pesach, perhaps may not be as famous as Kippur, but bottom line, without Shavuot, none of the other holidays have a meaning, have a purpose, or will ever exist. The word Shavuot, it comes from different sources. One source is Shavuot of Shavuah. Is the holiday of the weeks. Why? Because we came counting seven weeks of the Omer and we are ready, Be'ezat Hashem, hopefully to receive the Torah this coming Mosai Shabbat Sunday morning all over the world, God willing. Also, Lashon Shavuot is from Lashon Shavuah. Shavuah, although Shavuah is with the Sere and Shavuot is with the Kamas, or no, with the Patah, perhaps, but both of them carry the same letters. What's the difference between Shavuot and Shavuot? Shavuot means weeks, and Shavuot means to swear, to take an oath, to make a promise. Actually, an oath is bigger than a promise. That's the difference between Shavuot and Nether. That's why we say Hatarat Nedarim. We nullify the promises. But what Shavuah did we do? Na'aseh benishma. And not only that, the Gemara in Nidda tells us that when a child is about to come down to the world, all of us, Mashbi'in oto tehi saddiq ve'al tehi rasha, we swear before being born that we're going to try to become the best that we can be. So in a way, Shavuot, as I said in one of the earlier Minyanim today, as the Pasuk says, Be'yom hatunato u'b'yom simhad libo. Be'yom hatunato means Shavuot is our marriage renewal between us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. There are many beautiful traditions in the celebration of Shavuot. And I use the word traditions because... It's not mandatory, but it's the proper thing to do. And we speak, for example, the concept of ma'achale halab, eating dairy in Shavuot. Even though that there is a halachic concept of eating dairy in Shavuot, but in Shavuot, we also need to eat meat. Why? Because it's Yom Tov. Besamachta vehagecha vehaita ach sameach. So you need, the halacha writes on this, that a person needs to be very careful in the event that in Yom Tov we're going to have dairy and we're going to have meat, we need to make sure to observe the laws of preparation and separation to avoid, God forbid, that a person makes an avon of kashrut in the day of uh, Shavuot. So I tell you the way we do, and I believe it's the proper way. Some people may have different traditions, but I'm telling you what the Lacha states. The night of Yom Tov is night. So therefore, we eat meat and we drink wine. When we come from the Tikkun and Shaharit in the morning, we have dairy. And then when you wake up, you have some meat in honor of the holiday. This way you fulfill all opinions. You have dairy first, you took a break, and you have dairy a meet day later. 
You can have a dairy lunch with bread and a mossy, etc. But make sure that later on in the afternoon, even eat a piece of deli. So at least you had some meat in honor of the holiday. Why so much emphasis we give to the milk for the celebration of Shavuot? I'm only going to give you a few examples and reasons that I shared yesterday night with a wonderful Midrashah program. One reason was that on the day of Shavuot, that was the day that Moshe Rabbeinu was placed in the Nile River. And that was the day that Batia had attempted with other Egyptian ladies to nurse Moshe Rabbeinu. Finally, Miriam came into the picture and she brought her mother, Yocheved, to nurse Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu refused to nurse from the non-Jewish ladies. As the Gemara says, or the Midrashim write, is it possible that the mouth that God will speak through the Jewish people will speak through eating from a Goya? So Moshe Rabbeinu did not eat or drank milk from the Goyot, but from his own biological mother. Not only that, Shira Shirim writes, Let's talk about the honey and let's talk about the milk. Where does the milk come from? Cow, Hazaku Baruch. I am happy that everybody agrees to their answer. But where does the milk really come from? Hazaku Baruch. The milk comes from the blood. Hashem makes a miracle in the cow and in the mothers. And we know, and I apologize to the ladies if I spoke about the cow and the mother simultaneously, God forbid, has the shalom, has the shalom. But we all know very well that when a lady is nursing a baby, the monthly cycle, it's on vacation-like. Are you familiar with this concept? Why? The Gemara tells us, because Hashem converses the blood to become milk. Hesed. Blood is din, that's why it's nida, nidui din. And milk is hesed. That's, by the way, one of the reasons the Benishai explains, we know that there is a Torah prohibition to eat meat and dairy together. And the Torah did not give us a reason why. But what the Benishai says, that meat and dairy is the combination of din and hesed. What does it mean? Meat is red. And in order for us to be able to eat meat, we need to slaughter the animal. You need to kasherize the meat to remove the blood. So between slaughtering the knife and the blood, already meat is din, judgment type of food. Milk is doing a hesed to the cow. If the cow does not release up to th up after three days the milk that it produces, the cow feels in a tremendous amount of pain. So the Benish Hai says that the milk, the whiteness of the milk represents hesed, represents tahara, and the redness of the meat, the knife of the meat, the slaughtering of the meat represents din. And you don't want to collide din and hesed together. That is the Kabbalistic reason why he explains that meat and dairy don't connect. But I tell you one Hiddush, that up to the giving of the Torah, including the Goim, did not drink milk for thousands of years. Why not? Because the Goim believed that since the milk comes from the cow, so the milk is considered ever mina high. Ever mina high means the universal prohibition that you're not allowed to, let's say you want to have chicken drumstick. So what do you do? The pulque. 
for those, okay, pulky, okay? And you want to have a chicken uh, drumstick or chicken thigh. What do you do? You go to the chicken, you cut the leg, and you eat it. That is a Torah prohibition, not only for the Jewish people, for the Goim. This is called Ever Min Hachai, a limb from a living animal. The reason why it's forbidden is because it's cruelty and it's sar ba'alehaim, and obviously to cause suffering to the animals is a Torah prohibition. So the Goim believed that since the milk comes from a living animal, so milk is also considered ever minahai. And therefore the world did not drink milk for many, 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 many generations. The Torah was given to Am Israel on Shabbat. Although the Torah was going to be given on a Friday, Moshe Rabbeinu, as we learn, added one day, and Borei Olam agreed to it, and the Torah was given on Shabbat. Once the Torah is given on Shabbat, so then the prohibition of slaughtering became activated, the prohibition of causing bleeding became activated, the prohibition of cashering became activated, so the only option the Jewish people had was to drink milk, dairy items. Not only that, what is the food that we give to a child? A child, a newborn child, what is the food that we give? Milk. And that's what Shlomo Amelech says, devash behalav tahad leshonech, honey and milk. Why specifically these items? Because both items come from animals, and both items are sweet, are nutritious for the person when it comes to the honey and when it comes to the milk. What is the Torah is telling us? That even a person who may not have good behavior, God forbid, through the learning of Torah, the person can become a sweet person. And the person can nourish the neshama through the Torah as well. Not only that, you remember the Korban of Omer? What was the Korban of Omer? Se'orim. What is Se'orim? Ma'achal behema. The Gemara writes in Pesachim, I believe, barley was food given to the animals, at least in those days. Today, the barley is processed in a different way, and humans eat barley, which is nothing wrong to eat barley. In the olden days, that food was saved for the animals, and humans ate wheat, hita. And se'ora was for the behemah, as the Gemara writes. But what happens now when it comes to the korban of Shavuot? What was the korban of Shavuot? Sheteh lechem, bread. Made out of what type of flour? Hita, hames. So what do we learn? So here it says that the Torah is hinting us that the messages of the Omer can upgrade us from being, from acting in a way that is beneath a human and elevate ourselves through the seven weeks of the Omer to become a Ben Adam. And I'm trying to be refined in what I'm trying to say. But I think that all of you are intelligent and, and, and read between the lines that basically is telling us that even when the person may act, God forbid, God forbid, like an animal. And acting like an animal, has the shalom, doesn't take much effort. Just don't be a Ben Adam. Don't be a mensch. That's it. Don't have me dot to vote. Be Kaasan, be Rakzan, be Aslan, be Pazran, be an anger person, be a controlling person, be an impulsive person, be a lazy person, be a wasteful person that makes you suitable to eat Se'orim. But what is our mission? To separate the negative traits and to get closer to the good.
as David Amelech writes in the book of Tehillim, Sur mera va'asetov. Stay away from bad and do good. It doesn't mean, let me stop one and then I do the other. According to the Mefarshim, we need to do both. We need to build defenses of protection and I need to be proactive in a good way. Not only that, I'll finish with this. What I'm going to say now, I personally do it at home. It doesn't mean that you have to do it, but it's a proper thing to do according to the Bihaim Palachi. The Bihaim Palachi writes in Mo'ed Kol Hai that a person in Shavuot should eat in the Sa'uda of Yom Tov a bit of matzah. Okay? Sephardim perhaps don't eat matzah throughout the year. Ashkenazim, many, do hamosi on matzah. So many eat matzah instead of bread. But for Sephardim, after Pesach or after Pesach Sheni, we say mezonot. But it says that a person should make the effort to eat matzah on Shavuot as well. And the question is why? So he gives a few reasons. It says, number one, without Pesach, Shavuot would have never happened. So we remember Pesach, the miracle of Exodus of Egypt, in the day or night of Shavuot. There is no a specific time when to eat the matzah during Shavuot. You can eat a piece and you don't have to eat a kazait. Just symbolic. I think I have at home two matzot left over from Pesach, after Pesach Sheni, that we usually finish it with the family and guests during Shavuot. So it says, number one, it serves us as a reminder of Pesach, how great the miracle of Pesach was that enabled us to receive the Torah. Reason number two, it says something beautiful. It says that the Abodah of the Matzah is food for the Neshama. And the Hames, the bread, is food for the body. That's what he writes. Masa, the Zohar Kadosh calls it Silta di Memenuta and Silta de Asuta. Michla de Asuta and Silta de Memenuta. Translation. The Matzah is Michla, the food of healing. And Matzah is the shadow of Emunah. That's what it says in the Zohar Kadosh. What is Hames? Hames is for the body. Hames is the Yeser Ara. Masa is the Yeser Atov. So it says that when a person celebrates Shavuot, we're creating peace between our body and our Neshama. Why? Because the body and Neshama, many times, they don't see eye to eye. They challenge each other. What the body wants, the Neshama doesn't care. And what the Neshama needs and wants, the body doesn't care. So it says that the celebration of Shavuot, we mix both worlds. The physical aspect of life and the spiritual aspect of life. But the spiritual aspect of life can only become activated to the celebration of Shavuot. Because which is the Torah. Asher b'charvanu mikol ha'amim benatan lanu et torato baruch ata Hashem noten ha-Torah. Every day the Torah is given to Am Israel, But especially in the celebration of Shavuot. So he ratzon kahal kadosh that the upcoming celebration of Shavuot should bring blessing, godliness, and holiness into our life. And as I said before, we become true ambassadors and good representatives of Borei Olam in the entire world. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen ve'amen. Rebi Hananiah ben Akashia Omer.